Welcome to the lesson on the human reproductive system. In this lesson, we'll be discussing uh, how gender is determined, and we'll be discussing the structures and functions of the male reproductive anatomy, as well as the structures and functions of the female reproductive anatomy. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, human reproduction. Where does gender come from? There are three ways of determining gender. One is anatomy. The second is sex chromosomes. And the third is mental self-image. These three may not always give the same answer. For example, uh, we have transgendered individuals. There's another example of XY androgen insensitivity. This is when um, an individual is XY, that would be male, but lacks androgen receptors. This results in an anatomically female individual with no gonadal development and no uterus. Another example is 5-alpha reductase deficiency syndrome. These individuals are also XY as far as their sex chromosomes are concerned. But one gene malfunctions, resulting in a baby born looking female. And then the second copy of the gene switches on at puberty, and the individual develops into a male at age 12 to 13. So some interesting cases in which anatomy, sex chromosomes, and mental self-image don't necessarily always line up. Okay, next let's just start discussing the male reproductive anatomy. The male reproductive cells, of course, are the sperm cells that are produced in the testicles. Sperm production is best at lower temperatures than the core body temperature by about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So the testes lie outside the abdominal cavity in the scrotum. And this would keep, of course, uh, the testes cooler therefore produce sperm better. Each testes is made up of 300 to 600 seminiferous tubules which produce immature sperm. The sperm cells then pass in the epididymis where they mature. During ejaculation they pass into the vas deferens where fluid Fructose and a weak base are then added by the seminal, seminal vesicles, the prostate, and the cowper's gland. Next, let's take a look at the male reproductive anatomy. This diagram is in your blue book. So if you need to grab your blue book real quick, go ahead and do that. And then come back, and we'll get started. We're going to go in numerical order here. Uh, number one is the scrotum the sac which houses the testicles, of which singular would be testi. This is the epididymis that we mentioned just a moment ago that stores where sperm matures. The vas deferens is the tube. Five is the cowper's gland. We discussed this is one of the uh, glands that secretes um, fluid to mix with the sperm. This would be the rectum. Number seven is the seminal vesicles, which also secrete fluid to mix with the sperm. Eight is the bladder. Underneath the bladder and surrounding the urethra is the prostate gland. So just a side note here. Um, males that have an enlarged prostate, this tends to press on and close the urethra and they have trouble with urination. So there's medication for that, of course, to um, relax the prostate from pressing on the urethra there. Number 10 is the urethra, which can be traced all the way back up into the bladder. And of course, the penis. Next, let's discuss the female reproductive anatomy. We'll start with the ovary, which produces about 
200,000 eggs, all of them produced prior to birth of the human. Only about four to 500 mature during a woman's life. Immature eggs are encased in follicles and are released during ovulation. They then pass down the oviduct, also called the fallopian tubes. When fertilization occurs, it is usually in the oviduct. Implantation, though, takes place in the uterus. If the egg is unfertilized, it degenerates. Implantation in the oviduct can cause what is called ectopic pregnancy. It is fatal if not terminated surgically. Next, let's take a look at the human female diagrams. We will get to the um, menstrual cycle diagram and the ovulation diagram. Um, in a later lesson. So here we have the general anatomy of the female. This is the ovary. Number two is the oviduct. Remember that's also called the fallopian tube. Number three is the uterus. And number four is the urinary bladder. So you can see that the uterus is on top of the urinary bladder. That's why pregnant women have to pee a lot because the uterus expands and pushes on the urinary bladder um, and, and causes them obviously to have to urinate quite frequently. Here's the urethra. Number six is the vagina. Number seven is the cervix, which is the opening to the uterus. And number eight, the rectum. More in depth, we have this diagram. Let's start with number one is the ovary. And in the ovary, you can see all the egg cells. Number two is the egg. Number three is the egg being released, meaning it's being ovulated. Number four is the oviduct which again, remember this is called the fallopian tube. Number five is the uterine lining. Number six is the cervix, beginning of the uterus. Number seven, the vagina. And number eight, the sperm, making their way up into, um, through the cervix and into the uterus up through the oviduct to fertilize the egg. All right, let's go back to our notes. We have a couple things to finish up here. A hormonal birth control works by halting the menstrual cycle. This inhibits LH, which is luteinizing hormone, and ovulation does not occur. We'll discuss more on all of this in a lesson later on when we talk about the reproductive cycle. The placenta is an interface between the mother and the baby. Any small molecules, including alcohol, nicotine, and other drugs, and some viruses, HIV, rubella, etc., can cross the membrane from the mother to the baby. And so it's important to take that into consideration when there's a pregnancy. All right, that'll do it for our notes on the human reproductive system. Now let's take a look at this video that expands on the concepts we've discussed here.